Everdark, episode 87, Friend or Foe. Last on Everdark, Christian and Balthazar discuss whether other fledglings from Balthazar's time as Iros were still alive. Then they made love. Little did either know that their original conversation was quite important, as a fledgling just turned up. Christian slipped out of the bedroom, stepping over Justin's sleeping form and leaving Balthazar in the bathroom. Christian looked hard at the bed and imagined himself in it. He held this image and pushed it towards Balthazar so that his master would believe he was still in the room. If Balthazar hadn't been freaked out by the arrival of one of Iros's fledglings, it would never have worked, not for a second. But Balthazar had his mind fastened down tight and was fretting. Also, normally, Christian would never have left him when he was fretting, but he had to see this ancient fledgling for himself and ask a few questions before Balthazar arrived. Despite Balthazar talking tough about people, he was actually a softy at heart, a fledgling coming to him for help. He'd break down and help before checking this person out thoroughly, or at least that's what Christian told himself he was doing as he headed towards the elevator and got inside of it. He wondered briefly, how it worked, but decided that that was a question for another day. As it silently lowered him to the ground floor, he realized that it was the height of arrogance, or at least some might say it was, that he, a fledgling of but a few days, would think to meet an ancient vampire on their own. He was a speaker to the dead, but that hardly gave him power over a living vampire. I believe we are clearly still living, but I must do more research on that as well. He had so many questions, so many knotty problems, so much to learn and know that Christian found himself so grateful for immortality. There would always be something more to discover, but he wasn't going to see this ancient fledgling because of curiosity. He needed to know their intentions towards Balthazar. The elevator glided to a stop on the ground floor of the spire and he got out. He stood very still and cast his mind out as Balthazar had taught him to do. It wasn't hard to find the other fledglings' presence. While the other vampires' minds were stars, the fledglings was like a supernova. He didn't try to touch their mind, but he knew they were aware of him. They were waiting for him, out in the garden. He passed through the spire's front doors and found Arceus and Fiona standing there. Arceus looked a little wide-eyed while Fiona was frowning. Are you sure? She asked Arceus. That there is one of the ancients of the Iros bloodline here, yes, Fiona, I am sure. Arceus told her, staring towards a part of the garden that was obscured by several large trees. I suppose it makes sense. Fiona tapped her chin with a long finger. Balthazar did call all of the Iros here, and he is Iros and Damon is back, and that would cause many to be interested, especially the oldest of us who would have had actual experiences with the immortals. They're more than that. They're one of Iros's fledglings. Christian interrupted her. Both turned as one to face him. Fiona looked past him to find Balthazar. When she found that his master was not there, her forehead furrowed. She guessed he was up to something. Arceus looked pleased to see him, then frowned deeply. You're supposed to be upstairs with Balthazar. He thinks that I'm there. Yes, I know. Don't tell him I'm not. Christian instructed. Arceus's thick eyebrows rose and he let out a soft chuckle. You are already practicing the skill of mirroring. My God. What will you be able to do next week? And how did you figure it out? Christian shrugged. It seemed a logical thing to be able to do. Logical? Yes, I can see you would think that. Still, Christian, you are showing remarkable abilities for someone so very young. Arceus told him. I'm the direct fledgling of Iros. It makes sense that I might have a step up on some people. Christian answered. But not like this fledgling. He or she is a direct fledgling and has had plenty of time to learn and grow. I'm just at the start of my experience. Why do you want Balthazar to think you're up there when you're down here? Fiona crossed her arms over her chest and looked at him hard. Because I need to speak to my fellow fledgling first before Balthazar does. Christian said simply. I need to see them alone. Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Arceus shook his head almost violently. That is not wise. Why not? Why would one fledgling wish to hurt another? Christian asked. He'd seen no evidence of antagonism between Rome Tithe's fledglings, 
and he would definitely guess that Roan would pit fledglings against one another. Arceus took him by the shoulders and tried to steer him back inside of the spire. Assuming that they are, in fact, Iros's fledgling. They are. Balthazar is sure of it. Christian confirmed. Arceus shook his head. Amazing. And undoubtedly distressing to both you and Balthazar. I am not distressed. Christian countered. Fiona's left eyebrow rose. Really? Then why are you down here on your own, hiding your plans from Balthazar? It sounds to me like you want to stake your claim on your master so that the other vampire leaves. I doubt they would, even if I did have that intention. Christian cut the air with his right hand. No, I I'm here to protect Balthazar. Arceus drew up. For a moment, he looked ready to go into battle. The peaceful cleric turned into a warrior. Does this fledgling mean to harm Balthazar? I don't know. But I want to find out before Balthazar sees them and falls for whatever sob story they have. Christian explained. Fiona's brow furrowed. You really think he would be moved by someone he doesn't know? I assume he doesn't remember them. He doesn't. And yes, of course he would. Why do you think that he turned me, or, or took in Damon, or has done all he could for Roan Tide's other fledglings? Because he cares about people. He puts them first above himself. Christian's jaw tensed. And a fledgling of Iros would get even more of his sympathy and his desire to make things right. Fiona looked skeptical, but thoughtful too. I suppose there is something to what you say there. There is more than something, Fiona. Arceus rumbled, and a big smile crossed his bearded face. Christian, you understand Balthazar more than people who have known him for over a century. He's not that hard to figure out. He wears his heart on his sleeve. Anyone that buys his bad boy reprobate image isn't looking very hard. Christian shrugged. Arceus laughed and slapped his thigh. You really are the right fledgling for him. And that's why I have to speak to his other fledgling first, Christian said, and made a move to walk past Arceus. But the confessor stepped into his path, holding up a hand to block him. No. I understand your reasoning and believe it is sound, but I cannot let you do this. If you understand my reasoning, I, I can't understand why you would stop me. Christian wondered if he could move around Arceus fast enough to avoid the big man. Probably not. Arceus shook his head. Because we do not know what a fledgling of that era will do to another. The older the vampire, the stranger they are, especially if they haven't kept up with the world. And this one has not. The way they looked alone, Looked how? Christian demanded, not backing off. Starved, Arceus answered flatly. Like seer? Do you think that they were starved? Christian looked over Arceus's shoulder towards the garden where this fledgling was. No, I think they were hibernating in the earth. Some of the old ones are said to do that, Arceus explained. Which means they have had less blood than seer. And she is an immortal. Her control would be beyond theirs. Said to do that? You don't know? Christian frowned. The ancients have been as much of a myth as the immortals to many. Fiona explained. We thought many of them died in the war. Or, some say, that a lot of the older vampires simply... She shrugged, her arms tightening on herself. Killed themselves. Christian's eyebrows rose. Suicide? Why? The loss of their masters. The inability to deal with immortality. Boredom. She shrugged again. You know that you have ancient fledglings out there too, don't you, Fiona? Christian said to her. You're a wyvern. She had to have made a good many, like all the immortals did. Alarm flooded her beautiful features. But then she gave a tight nod. I suppose I do. Strange, since I have no fledglings now with this second life. Maybe you sensed you already had some, Arceus told her. Her lips flattened. I like being on my own. Having to worry about others is... She didn't finish that sentence, but Arceus looked sad all the same. While he was distracted, Christian slipped out from under his hands and headed to the garden where his fellow fledgling waited for him. Christian, wait! Arceus called. But then, bell-like, a voice said, It is all right. Let him come. Arceus, who had taken a few steps toward him, stopped dead in his tracks. It was clear from his clenched jaw that he wanted to move, but the voice stopped him. Again, this should have worried Christian. Arceus was strong and bull-headed. Little stopped him, but a few words from this being had. Yet on Christian went, racing through the mini-maze of bushes to a central fountain. 
There, seated on a white stone base, getting their fingers wet in the pool was a figure swathed in a black cloak. Christian skidded to a halt a few feet away, but his nose wrinkled as he smelled dank earth and the sweetness of rot. There was a soft chuckle. Forgive me, I am none too clean, but there are some needs that are greater than food and cleanliness, like seeing one's master after, after a long time. The voice was masculine. This was a man, though he was wrapped up so thoroughly in what almost seemed a winding sheet that Christian could not see his face. A lock of black hair fell out of the hood. The hands were white, pale as starfish in a night ocean. But it was hard to tell under the moonlight. Everything here took on a pale cast, even Fiona's ebony skin. Balthazar's coming, but he's very particular about how he looks, so he's primping now. Christian half lied. Balthazar was particular about how he looked and his clothes, but that wasn't why he was delaying coming out here. Christian wasn't sure he had too long before the illusion of him being upstairs was broken, so he had to move quickly to get the information he wanted. Is he still finicky? Yes, that is good. A different person. It's not. The fledgling's voice was a little hollow but cultured. Christian wasn't sure about the accent, though. Christian shrugged and slowly circled around to try to get a view of the fledgling's face, but he lowered his head. Why don't you want me to see you? Christian frowned. Because I am finicky, too. I am not myself, the fledgling answered. Because you were hibernating? The hood bobbed. Then Eros, there was a long, painful pause. Then Eros died. I was there, on the battlefield with him. I felt his mind go. I felt his soul leave. Mine wanted to follow him, but I could not. Christian drew in a sharp breath. Pain radiated off the fledgling in waves. It hit Christian's mind and it felt like chains dragged it. He brought his hands to his temples and curled forward. The pain abruptly left. I am sorry. The fledgling's mind shut down. I did not mean for you to experience that. My control is more fragile than I thought. Christian's hand slowly lowered as the pain remained gone. It's fine. A dry chuckle like dead leaves scraping over concrete. Not at all. You love him too. So my experience of losing him resonated within you. That is good as well. Balthazar is a wonderful person. He deserves love and loyalty. Christian said firmly. Which is why we need to talk. The fledgling nodded. Yes, I understand. I expected as much, but you are so very young. Are you not afraid? Arrogance and boldness are qualities of youth. Christian admitted. Even if I were afraid of you, I would still have come. At the moment, I have no evidence that you are a threat to me at all. You saw what I was able to do to the confessor that tried to keep us apart. You know I am powerful and skilled with the Eros gift, the fledgling pointed out. Yes, but that doesn't mean that you would use that power or skill against me, Christian said. And it was worth the risk to see you first. I understand. The fledgling lifted his head, and those long-fingered hands folded in his lap. What is it that you wish to know? The thing that bothered Christian wasn't that it wasn't like Balthazar hadn't existed before tonight. Yet tonight, when Damon used Armageddon and revealed to the vampire world that he was back, and Balthazar was by his side, this very powerful fledgling appears. Surely he was stronger than Roan Tithe. He should have saved Balthazar from him if he truly cared. Christian crossed his hands at the wrists, behind his back, and began his questioning. My first question is, why did you only return now, and not when he really needed you? The fledgling still really needed me. I am afraid I do not understand. Balthazar has lived over two hundred years. He didn't suddenly become Iros tonight. Christian pressed. I did not hear his call until tonight. But what do you mean? Really needed me? There was an edge to the words. Worry threaded through them. Worry and command. Christian found himself saying, Don't you know? Uh, about Roan Tithe and, and what he did to Balthazar and, and all the others in his house? Christian stopped. 
No, you don't know. Of course you don't. You've been sleeping. Even though he was hearing only a touch of the other vampire's mind, he realized that this fledgling had no idea what he was on about. This was a good thing. It meant that he might have come to Balthazar's aid, that he didn't just leave Balthazar in that terrible situation. I only just woke, the fledgling continued. Ron Tithe, our master was human? Christian realized that the fledgling was reading his mind much more deeply. He grew uncomfortable with that. That's a really long story that Balthazar... Eros. Balthazar? Christian said firmly. It's a really painful story that Balthazar should tell you if he wants to. I shouldn't. I just wanted to see if you were aware of him being in pain and stayed away. I would never have stayed away if I had known he was back. Let alone needed me. The fledgling shook his head by calling him Balthazar. You seek to make him yours. Eros makes him everyone's. Eros is yours, you mean? Christian pointed out. Perhaps... The fledgling stirred. I understand why you don't want him to take that role as immortal. He is safer as Balthazar than as Eros. Christian swallowed. Was he worried about Balthazar's safety? Even after all he had seen that Damon could do. But Damon can't be everywhere and doing everything. He has limits. He is safer. Christian agreed. Though he has made a decision to accept who he was in the past and return to that role. King Damon requires his services. They are friends. Great friends. Yes, and he would do whatever the king asks of him, or be whatever he must be. He thought to preserve something for King Damon with the war, but it did not go as planned, the fledgling said softly. There was a lot in those sentences for Christian to unpack, but he found himself telling one of his own truths. I'm not ready for Balthazar to be everyone's. I'm not sure he is either. I am certain he wants to cocoon with you. By the gods, you are young, though so strong and sure of yourself. I cannot believe that you have been allowed out into the world. The fledgling sounded amazed. I'm certain that Balthazar would want things to be different, less dangerous anyways. But the world is as it is. Damon has returned. My best friend is his fledgling. The king has a fledgling. Christian nodded and hesitantly sat on the fountain too. The stone was cold beneath him, the water colder still. He does. There's a lot going on, so cocooning, even if I were to want such a thing, is not possible. I see. What about with you? Christian asked, genuinely curious. Did Eros cocoon with you? Eros was the rare immortal that took the time to care for each of us. You must understand that in the beginning, the immortals were simply looking for the ones best suited for their bloodline, the fledgling explained. They needed many fledglings so that they could grow their bloodline, so it was not as personal with us as it would be for later fledglings. But Eros did know us. The nature of his gift meant that he could see into our souls even more than Kali. I don't think Kali cares about anyone's souls unless he can use them for something. Christian crossed his arms over his chest. True, a dry rasp. You already have some experience with Kali, then. Christian's eyebrows rose. You really need a refresher on what's going on. Kali is going up against Damon. He's the one that created a whole fake religion, and it's really complicated, and not important to the matter at hand. Which is to understand who I am, and if I'm a threat to your Balthazar. And perhaps your place with him? The last was said with a slight lilt of amusement, but Christian shook his head. No, I have no doubt of my place with him. He's already shown himself to be quite romantic. Again, you show remarkable poise for one so young and new. Life has taught me to understand my place in it, and the people around me are chosen carefully. Christian told him. What do you want from Balthazar? Do you need a master to follow? The fledgling pushed the hood away from his face, and Christian could see silver eyes glowing. There was a narrow chin, high cheekbones and a tall forehead. It was the face of a scholar. There was almost something elfish about the features, but they were skeletal. They were pared down to the bone. 
The fledglings shouldn't have been able to sit there, let alone be awake in such a state of hunger. Christian felt a trace of unease, though the fledgling seemed quite in control of himself. I loved him. Love him. I was devoted to him. Not a romantic love. I see that question in your mind. The skeletal face looked beautific for a moment. He allowed me access to knowledge that I never thought I would have. He allowed me to learn, to understand. He opened the doors of knowledge to me, and I cannot thank him enough. Christian slowly nodded. I was just thinking to myself how being immortal has given me endless time to learn, and how grateful I am for that. It seems you were the same in this way. There was no question we could not ask. No topic that was forbidden to us. He supported me and the others in all ways. The fledgling's voice trailed off. Once, then he was gone. It was wrong. Were you trying to die? Or, or just hibernate? Christian asked. His voice a mere whisper as he saw the suffering writ large there. Both, the fledgling admitted. I wished to die when he did. I could not continue, but I did. I was covered under the bodies of the dead, and I just burrowed down. Down into the earth, down into the darkness eternal. Soil and blood filled my mouth, and I rested there with the bones. Christian shuddered. You hibernated on the battlefield? With our master's body, he whispered. That's horrible. Christian suddenly understood something he had not before. He pointed out into the darkness of the Everdark. The battle was here? Yes, not that far away, the fledgling answered. The skin between Christian's shoulder blades twitched. Balthazar died out there? Yes. Was he battling Seer? No, that can't be right. He was trying to protect her. This was where they mounted the last defense before the two of them fell. The fledgling answered. Christian wondered who it was that killed Balthazar. Another immortal? Just the sheer number of attackers? He somehow couldn't ask at that moment. Is his body, no, his bones, still there? He didn't know why he was asking this. Balthazar was up in the spire, right at that moment, fussing. He wasn't out in the dark. In the mud, in the... The fledgling opened his robes and took out something white and round and smooth. Christian felt his throat close up as the fledgling placed the skull on the fountain's lip between them. The lower jaw was missing, but there were fangs on the upper jaw. Christian reached towards the skull. His hand hovered above the domed top of it. His hand was shaking. He's alive, Christian whispered. He's up in the spire. He's showering. I think he's avoiding meeting you because he doesn't know what to say. He fears being a disappointment to me? The fledgling read his mind again. He doesn't know who he was. He doesn't know how he was with you. Christian drew his hand back and wiped his palms against the tops of his thighs. He was perfect with me. I love him dearly. And you as well. My newest little brother, the fledgling said. I am here to join you. If... You will have me. I am not here to displace you. I do not believe I could even if I had such a desire. Christian nodded. I wasn't afraid of that. I was curious, but, but not afraid. Like I said, I, I know my place with him. He doesn't hide his feelings. You have made him happy then. I, I am glad. More glad than I can say. He doesn't believe that he knows everything. I think he sees his own weaknesses much more clearly than anyone else. So he always sees where he's falling down, and believes that the failures are all there is sometimes. Christian continued. He undoubtedly feels that he's let you down. He need not worry. The fledgling caressed the skull. He was beloved to me then. He is now. He is Eros. He's Balthazar, though, too. He's lived this life not as an all-powerful immortal, but a man. A man who was practically enslaved by his own master, and had to kill him to save himself and everyone else. Christian explained. The fledgling went still. Show me more of this, this awfulness. How could I not have woken then? I wondered the same thing, but it is clear to me that this being truly didn't know. I don't know much. Only what he's told me and the others have said. It really is Balthazar's story to tell. I only know some of the scars it left. 
But Christian opened his mind, and it felt like a cool breeze rustling through his thoughts. The fledgling's head lowered. There were a few curse words in a language that sounded sort of German, but he wasn't sure. He was so brave, so singular. He has felt that he needs to be responsible for everyone, yet, at the same time, pretends that he isn't responsible for anyone at all. Christian let out a soft huff of sad laughter. He was always trying to keep everyone happy, especially Damon, as our king slipped further and further into depression. After silence had fallen for a time, Christian asked, What is your name? I'm Christian. Uh, you know that. Touch my mind, the fledgling offered. Christian hesitated. The fledgling's mind was open. It seemed, though, like a black pool of water reflecting the moon. It wasn't frightening. It was just unknown. And he could be making a big mistake. This mind could swallow him. But Christian didn't believe it would. This being was very powerful but not, as he had suspected, dangerous to him. Christian reached. Your name is... Elgar, Balthazar said from behind them. Christian swung around to see his master. Balthazar had pulled on a white button-down shirt and checkered slacks. His clothes were uncharacteristically wrinkled. His hair was still wet and slicked back from the shower. It was clear he had figured out that Christian was gone and hightailed it down here. Or rather that Fiona and Arceus had told him. Fiona was standing in the background. She had teleported him there. He'd been watching them, listening. All of this Christian read in a moment. Christian, come here. Balthazar gestured with his fingers for Christian to come to him. Elgar half rose to his feet. I would not hurt him, master. He is my little brother. If you remember my name, then... I don't remember you. Balthazar's tone was clipped. I read your mind and got the information I needed. Then you must know. I know that you are starving, Balthazar snapped. You are fighting against hunger and madness. I was mad. I am sane now, Elga answered softly. Then you died. Christian, please, come here now. There was a note in command in his voice. But Christian, though he stood up, stayed put. His mind was touching Elgar's, and he knew that Balthazar was right, that Elgar was on edge. He was fighting to keep himself as himself. Balthazar, he needs our help, Christian said. Christian, please do as I ask. Do not stand there and- He needs you to help him, Christian interrupted. Can't you feel it? He could feel it. Weren't you the one saying that Balthazar would be rushing to help this unknown vampire and shouldn't do it? Fiona asked. I did. Christian nodded. And it sounds quite arrogant, but- You are a love, Christian. But I do not need your protection, Balthazar said firmly. Though it looks like you need mine. No, I don't. Elgar can be helped easily. By you, Christian pleaded. He does not know me, Elgar said hollowly and his shoulders slumped. He simply sees me as a threat. It's just because he's worried about me. He will see the truth. Christian went over to Balthazar and took his hands in his. Balthazar, Iros, your fledgling needs you. Please help him. Join us next time for episode 88, After. If you want to support this podcast and get the unedited episodes, we actually have something better than a Patreon. I have my own serial subscription website, wraithrain.com. It's an old-fashioned paywall site, just like Netflix or Crunchyroll. With a membership, you do get the uncut versions of Everdark with no intros, outros, or edited parts. Just the chapters as they were meant to be heard before we've had to make it all Disney safe. If this sounds interesting to you, try us out for a month. The link to sign up is in the notes. The most you'll pay is $9.95 a month, and you'll be directly supporting us, real people. Not big corporations like Amazon or Netflix. Not content created with AI. Wraith Rain is a small team of actual humans doing the best we can to transport you with romantic action and adventure stories. We really thank you for your support.